deciding whether to be vaccinated against COVID-19 is a personal decision we all have been asked to make. Some of you may be finding this decision difficult, as you are not sure which of the different messages being shared, especially on social media, to believe. It is important that you take time to make your decision about COVID-19 vaccination to ensure it is the right one for you, as the decision you make may have a big consequence on the health and potentially survival of yourself, your family, your friends and your community. The Health Ministries Department of the North England Conference of Seventh-day Adventists would like to help members and anyone viewing our online resources by providing them with reliable medical, scientific and spiritual information that they can trust at this time. I have been speaking with a number of members in our church who are professionals in different areas of healthcare and medical research to bring together information that we hope will answer your questions or provide understanding. It is not our intent to tell you whether or not you should take the vaccine, as that is your free choice. Rather, it is to provide clarification of some of the medical and scientific information so that your decision can be more informed. I recently chatted with Louisa and Hannah Jeffrey, who attend the Halezo in Central Seventh-day Adventist Church in Birmingham, where Louisa serves as one of the eldership team to ask them some of the biological questions that have been raised about the virus and the various vaccines developed. Louisa and Hannah have both worked as postdoctoral scientists in immunology for over 10 years and are passionate about the health ministry's work of the church. They shared with me how their roles as scientists working with living cells to understand the cellular and molecular mechanisms of disease and identify therapeutic approaches has made them more and more convinced that we are the handiwork of a creator God. They said the complexity, the precision and the beauty of the mechanisms at play in the cells from which our bodies are made is far too great to be the product of chance. Both consider themselves privileged to have had the opportunity to study in this sphere and see God's creation at work in their research. They said they believe fervently that God has given medical scientists the ability to investigate the mechanisms that underlie the workings of his creation and believe he wants scientists to use this knowledge to design new treatments and preventative approaches for diseases. Furthermore, they believe the efficiency with which the nation has been able to respond to the pandemic, introducing vaccines and treatments, testifies to the goodness of God in enabling medics and scientists to have already acquired the appropriate knowledge, tools and infrastructure with which to do so. It is now my pleasure to share with you a very good presentation they have recorded to refresh your knowledge about COVID-19 as well as the available vaccines. To help explain the science behind the COVID-19 vaccines, we will begin by explaining briefly what the virus responsible for COVID-19 is and how it causes disease. The virus that causes COVID-19 is a severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 virus, or SARS-CoV-2 for short. It belongs to a large family of viruses called coronaviruses. These viruses cause diseases not only in humans, but in other mammals and birds too. Some of the viruses in this family cause less severe disease, such as the common cold whilst others cause more severe disease, such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, and of course, COVID-19. As this diagram of a coronavirus shows, these viruses have remarkable structure, although they are simple compared to human cells. At the center of the viral particle is the viral genome, which carries the code for how the viral proteins are to be made. This genome is composed of a molecule called ribonucleic acid, or RNA, and it is packaged with proteins called capsid proteins. Surrounding the capsid is an outer envelope composed of proteins embedded in lipid. As well as protecting the genome of the virus as it passes between host cells, the proteins and lipid of this envelope 
help the virus to bind and fuse with the membrane of the host cell and get in. The virus then essentially hijacks the host cell it has entered in order to get help to make more copies of itself because like all viruses, the coronaviruses are unable to reproduce by themselves. They need help from the host cell to make new copies of their proteins and to replicate their genome. Let's have a look at how SARS-CoV-2 infects human cells and uses them to reproduce. In order to get into the human cell, SARS-CoV-2 uses its protruding spike protein within its envelope to bind to specific receptors on the host cell. Once inside the host cell, SARS-CoV-2 uses the protein synthesizing machinery of the cell, which is found in the cell's cytoplasm, to make its proteins. In this process, amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins, become linked together in the order defined by the SARS-CoV-2 RNA genome. In the cytoplasm, the viral genome also replicates. Some of the viral proteins that have been made help to facilitate this. New SARS-CoV-2 particles assemble and are released from the host cell, resulting in the destruction of the host cell and amplification and spreading of the virus infection as the new virus particles that are released infect other cells. Cells of the immune system recognize that the virus is foreign and are activated to try to control the virus, but in some cases, rather than curtailing the infection, the activation of the immune system is excessive and results in disease which in some cases is severe and results in death. Vaccination provides a way to create an immune system that is prepared to fight the virus should you become infected and to clear it before it multiplies within you to a level that causes illness. Vaccination therefore has the potential to dramatically reduce the incidence of severe disease and loss of life. As you are probably aware, a number of different COVID-19 vaccines have been developed, which are based upon different strategies. The Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna vaccines are genetic vaccines that work by introducing part of the genetic sequence of the virus into our bodies. Some people have expressed concern that this genetic sequence will get into their own DNA and change it, leading to possible harm to themselves. But this is not true. The genetic vaccines will not change your DNA. Let's therefore look at what genetic vaccines are and why they will not do this. Genetic vaccines contain an RNA molecule, which is the code for one of the viral proteins. When this RNA enters into the body cells of the vaccine recipient, it directs their protein synthesizing machinery to produce the viral protein, which then becomes displayed on the surface of the cell, both as whole protein and as fragments. Cells of the body's immune system then mount a response against this viral protein and immune memory cells are made that when they encounter the protein again in the future during a real SARS-CoV-2 infection, are ready to destroy the virus before it causes symptoms of disease and an illness that is potentially life-threatening. The RNA code that both the Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna vaccines have used is that for the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, which, as you might recall, is the protein that protrudes in its envelope that SARS-CoV-2 uses to get into its host cells. In order to get this RNA into the recipient cells, Scientists have packaged it inside the lipid nanoparticle. This lipid firstly protects the fragile RNA whilst it is outside of the recipient cells, and secondly, it fuses with the lipid membrane that surrounds the body cells, thereby enabling the genetic material to enter into the cells. So now to explain why this RNA in the genetic vaccines will not change the DNA of your cells that it gets into. Firstly, RNA and DNA are different molecules. 
Whilst both RNA and DNA and what we call nucleic acids built up of units called nucleotides, the nucleotides in RNA and DNA are different. The nucleotides in DNA have a deoxyribose sugar, whilst in RNA it is ribose. Their nitrogenous organic base groups are also different. DNA uses thymine, T, whereas RNA uses uracil, U. Secondly, the DNA in your cells is a double-stranded molecule, whilst the RNA of the genetic vaccines is single-stranded. Thirdly, the DNA within your cells is contained within an integral compartment of the cell called the nucleus. This is surrounded by a double membrane called the nuclear envelope. The movement of molecules between the nucleus and cytoplasm across this membrane is tightly regulated. The mRNA of the vaccine cannot cross this membrane in the direction from the cytoplasm into the nucleus, so it cannot interfere with your DNA. Lastly, RNA molecules are very unstable and so will not last long enough to affect your DNA. Let us look now at the AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccines, which are examples of viral vector vaccines. They are made of DNA rather than RNA and make use of an adenovirus to get the genetic material into the host cell instead of a lipid nanoparticle. As for the Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna vaccines, the aim is to get the body cells of the vaccinated person to make the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2. When we hear the word virus, we tend to think of something dangerous, but adenoviruses have been harnessed and developed by scientists as tools to transfer genetic material into cells safely for several decades. In fact, COVID-19 vaccines are not the first to make use of this technology. An example is the Ebola vaccine. Other vaccines being developed on this strategy include vaccines against Mycobacterium tuberculosis that causes TB, the human immunodeficiency virus HIV that causes AIDS, and Plasmodium falciparum, which causes malaria. Adenoviruses have a double-stranded DNA genome. In order for the adenovirus to carry the spike protein code, scientists first had to convert it into DNA. The spike protein gene was then inserted into the adenovirus genome, replacing the adenovirus's E1 gene, which it requires to replicate. Consequently, the adenovirus was made unable to replicate which adds to the vaccine safety. For the target cell to make spike protein from the DNA code of the adenovirus, the DNA code has to be converted into messenger RNA. The machinery to perform this is present in the nucleus of our cells, where it is used all of the time to facilitate the expression of our own genes. The DNA of the adenovirus vector vaccine therefore has to enter into the nucleus and be converted to a messenger RNA molecule, which then exits the nucleus via the nuclear pores and enters the cytoplasm of the cell and directs the production of spike protein for the immune system of the recipient to respond to. Although the DNA of the viral vector vaccine has to enter the nucleus, thereby coming close to our own DNA, this is not a problem with adenovirus-based vaccines because unlike some other viruses, such as lentiviruses and retroviruses like HIV, adenoviruses do not integrate their DNA into the DNA of their host cell. The chance that the COVID-19 viral vector vaccines cause mutation of your DNA is therefore very, very low, and much lower than for many viruses that you are naturally exposed to in nature. Another concern that people have expressed about the viral vector vaccines is whether they contain human or animal cells. In the case of the AstraZeneca vaccine, the adenovirus vector that has been used originated from the AD5 adenovirus that infected chimpanzees. It was purified from the chimpanzee's faeces, 
not taken from the tissues of the animals. The scientists in Oxford have worked with this adenovirus for about 10 years and come to understand much more about the biology of its life cycle and how to use it to make effective vaccines against certain diseases. After inserting the spike protein into the AD5 genome, making it able to direct the production of spike protein and making it non-replicative, it had to be copied. This has been done by culturing it on a line of cells that grow continuously. The cell line came originally from human embryonic kidney. Although the vaccine is grown on cells, it does not contain cellular material because any cells and cellular debris are removed by filtration. To conclude, the Pfizer-BioNTech and AstraZeneca vaccines that have been most widely used within the UK COVID-19 vaccination programme represent relatively novel but well understood genetic and viral vector vaccination strategies respectively. Neither will change your DNA and both have proven safe and effective under fully regulated and strictly controlled clinical trials. Furthermore, data collected in real time throughout the vaccination program via the Zoe COVID Symptom Study app continues to show the effectiveness of the vaccination program in reducing the risk and severity of COVID-19 across the UK population. As this graph shows of COVID-19, the incidence is mostly in unvaccinated populations, indicating the vaccination reduces the risk of illness. Highlighting the scale of this reduced risk, figures from the 24th of June show that having just one dose of the vaccine reduces your risk of getting COVID-19 2.6 fold and having the second dose reduces it a further three fold, meaning that the full course of the vaccine reduces your risk of developing COVID-19 eight fold compared to no vaccination. Data from the study also shows that people who have been vaccinated have fewer and milder symptoms and are less likely to be hospitalised than those who have not been vaccinated. Amongst older people, it has also been shown that the risk of developing long COVID is reduced by having the vaccine and vaccination reduces transmission. In response to these findings, Professor Tim Spector who is the lead scientist on the Zoe COVID SIT study app and professor of genetic epidemiology at King's College London, stated that COVID-19 vaccines should enable us to live much more normal lives in a world with COVID-19. It is important to note, however, that no vaccine can be 100% effective. Indeed, these data still indicate that even after two doses of vaccine, it is possible for people to become sick with COVID-19. For this reason, it is important that everyone, vaccinated or not, continues to follow the hands, face, space guidance, washing hands, wearing a face covering, and keeping to the two meters safe distancing rules. So the five key take home messages from this presentation are that COVID-19 vaccines will not change your DNA. COVID-19 vaccines do not contain human or animal cells. COVID-19 vaccines are effective, reducing risk of illness, hospitalization and death. COVID-19 vaccines should enable us to live much more normal lives in a world with COVID-19. COVID-19 vaccines like all vaccines, are not 100% protective. Therefore, once vaccinated, continue to abide by the hands, face, space rule.